Uh, we have got a quick but uh, really cool little show for you tonight. And it all has to do with a new star that appeared on Christmas Day. Not only appeared, but a slew member uh, actually discovered this new star. We're going to be telling you all about it during the show with the help of uh, slew astronomer Bob Berman. If you've got any questions during the show, or at any time actually, you can send them to at SLU and we'll pick those up. Uh, but tonight, uh, don't forget, SLU members, if you are watching on the 24-hour channel, you can snap your own images from these live images coming in from the observatory of this wonderful galaxy. And that is where this new star has appeared. So what are we talking about? Well, SLU member Emmanuel Conseil discovered this new star on Christmas Day using SLU's telescopes at the flagship observatory at the Institute of Astrophysics in the Canary Islands. That's where our observatory is. And this nova in this beautiful galaxy, the Triangulum Galaxy, uh, it's got one of those catchy names in astronomy. You know uh, astronomers love these catchy names. The name of it is Nova M33 2015-12b. But I think we're going to call it the Christmas star from now on. Uh, now, what better day for a discovery like this to have been made? It was SLU's 12th birthday, would you believe, on Christmas Day, so how cool is that? But anyway, SLU members, if you're watching on the 24-hour channel, don't forget, you can uh, snap your own images using the Starshare camera. Now, without further ado, because I want to talk about this image that's up on the screen straight away, uh, please welcome uh, Bob Berman, SLU astronomer. Bob Berman, good evening, Bob. Thank you very much for joining us over the Christmas period. Hi, Paul, and Happy New Year, and all the rest to all of our SLU members. And how exciting is this? This is so exciting. A new star, a nova in this galaxy. Gorgeous. Look at this live view through our half-meter telescope. It's a stunning galaxy, one of the best. Face-on galaxy. It used to be called the Pinwheel Galaxy, and now usually M101, uh, just outside of the Big Dipper's handle, is, is commonly called the Pinwheel Galaxy. But, boy, it looks like a pinwheel because it's an SC-type galaxy. Galaxy. It means the arms are spread out. They're not, not tightly wound up. And uh, this uh, true color image uh, live of this makes it very exciting. I, you know, I and, was wrong. I, I, really you know, thought, I really thought that, we, well, that only supernovas could be imaged by us, by our telescopes, in other galaxies. Of course, in our own galaxy, we can easily do it. And I just learned in the last half hour that uh, that the SLU telescopes are capable, at least in galaxies in our local group, the nearer galaxies, of not just uh, seeing supernovae, but, but regular novas as well, which are much less brilliant. And um, Bob, we're going to talk uh, about exactly what defines a nova ver um, versus a supernova. But maybe first of all, we can ask our producer, let's hop over and see the discovery image from Emmanuel, uh, who used the half meter telescope. And, you know, you're right, Bob, it's pretty difficult to see. But you can just see here uh, this tiny white dot uh, at the bottom of the screen in the outer arms of the Triangulum Galaxy marking this new star. Now, it's not strictly a new star, is it? So let's start off by telling viewers, Bob, what is a nova? That's well, very exciting. A regular nova, as opposed to a supernova, is a white dwarf star about the same mass as our own sun. In fact, this could happen to our sun in a binary star system. So that can happen to our sun because our sun is a solitary star. So if you get a two-star system and about half the stars in the galaxy are binary stars, where the white dwarf, the collapsed star, it's only the size of Earth, very compressed, very dense, but still has the mass of the sun. So every little sugar cube, little piece of it uh, would outweigh a uh, fully loaded cement truck. And in that little white dwarf star, needless to say, the gravity is so strong that the material wow. from the other star can accumulate on its surface. And when enough of that uh, gassy material accumulates, boom, it can all blow up with a bang and the, and the star briefly becomes a million times brighter than it did before. 
But I, I'm still in awe that, that Emmanuel was able to do this. Our SLU member noticed this thing. I mean, look at that. It doesn't exactly pop out to our eyes that he noticed this, which did not appear just a few days earlier, uh, suddenly was visible. So hats off to the SLU telescopes, but also hats off to our well, observer, well. to Emmanuel. Now, now, what Emmanuel does is over his SLU membership, he's actually collected... Uh, um, I think over 5,000 images now. Here we've got the beautiful live uh, telescope feeds also superimposed on top of the discovery image here. Uh, now, what em Emmanuel's done is he has to collect huge numbers of reference images. So he's imaged the Triangulum Galaxy many, many times before. So he wasn't just looking at this image and suddenly thought, oh, look, there's a new small dot on this image I don't recognize. No, he actually uses his previous image and he compares both of them. He actually overlays them. Uh, and that's a technique that's, that's used quite often, isn't it, Bob, to, to discover astronomical objects, this blink it, comparison. Exactly. A blink comparator was how Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto on a photograph taken in January of 1930. And in February of 1930, using that same technique, yes, he saw an object that wasn't there before. They didn't mar announce it until March 13th, but it was actually on an image taken in January and examined in February. But yeah, same method. Now, one aspect. You, you've told us that a nova happens when you have this binary star, these two stars that are very close together. One is this little white dwarf, kind of nearing the end of its life. The other one might be a red giant, and one of them is grabbing, it's stealing, robbing some of the outer shell, mainly hydrogen, from that companion star, until it gets so great that that shell itself ignites in nuclear fusion and blows off. But the inner nova, that white dwarf is left intact, isn't it? But that's not quite the case with a supernova. So that's one of the differences. Definitely. It's a matter of degree of violence, degree of, uh, of uh, how it destroys the star. You're absolutely right. And a nova looking at this gorgeous picture, you know, it's reminding me how pretty the M33 galaxy mm -hmm. is, you know, just looking at this again makes you want to spend more time with the SLU telescopes, doesn't it? Well, okay, so a white dwarf star, yeah, nearing the end of its life, essentially all that's left is oxygen and carbon, all the hydrogen and the helium has been uh, used up, and it's so dense, so, so incredibly compact that it takes a lot to destroy it. You could blow hydrogen bombs off on the surface and you wouldn't even make a dent you know, you don't even have to insure these things. You're not going to harm them. So even a nova explosion leaves the star intact, but in a supernova, actually one of the two varieties of supernovae, a type one, same thing happens. Material is accreted from another star, except instead of uh, this being a very low uh, mass star, this is a little bit of a heavier star usually, and then the material ignites, except there, the entire star is destroyed. A thermonuclear explosion is set up that just blasts the whole thing to kingdom co come. And, and now you're getting brilliances of 100 million times brighter than the star was instead of a mere 1 million times. Then there's another type of supernova where no two stars are needed, just a single old age massive star where no longer can support the weight of all of its layers because stars are very massive. And in a very massive one, um, the outward pushing fuel from the core that was keeping the star the size it was, when you use up that nuclear core fuel, you can't support the weight of all those outer layers. So they, they collapse. And anytime you get collapsed, you get extra heat. And this causes new types of fusion reactions to suddenly occur. These are more violent and less efficient, but they only happen once. They blow the star to kingdom come, creating elements that you can't get. Any 
anywhere else. So you get temperatures that forge elements heavier than iron. Uh, in a normal star, you don't get anything heavier than iron. Here you can get the kind of uh, iodine. I mean, we have in our thyroid glands and uranium and lead and all sorts of other things. And the fact that they're here around us on Earth and even in our sun proves that a supernova had something to do with our own origins as well. Well, Bob, you're, you're going to be uh, doing another show, I think, in uh, two hours' time where you're going to be talking about and showing live images of possibly one of the most famous supernovae remnants, and, and that's the Crab Nebula. So that's coming up in a couple of hours' time. But in the meantime, let's just get back to uh, this nova that Emmanuel Conseil has, uh, Conseil has um, discovered on Christmas Day. What a day! I mean, how, how amazing would it be? On Christmas Day, what a Christmas present, to check your images from last night, and there it is, this tiny white dot, this new star, this nova, that didn't appear in his image from the previous night. So that's what he was doing. He was comparing the images. And people have asked us, how do you go about, you know, discovering a nova, a supernova, a comet, whatever? Well, it's looking for this comparison, looking at the same place in the sky or looking at the same galaxy one night and comparing it to a new image uh, the following day. So that's how that's done. Now, Bob, what else can you tell us about Nova? Because it, isn't it quite surprising that we haven't had one in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, not for, we should be getting more, shouldn't we? That This is what the science is telling us, but there seems to be a bit of a dearth of them, really. Uh, well, yes. A supernova only happens in our galaxy, it's said, once every century, but we're, we're really overdue. There was one early in the 17th century. We're now more than 400 years since that last supernova. There's actually two in the course of a single lifetime, one in uh, 1572 and the other in... Was it 1604 or 1608? I think it was 1604, and none since then. So supernovae are very rare. Novi, though, we do get. There was one in, was it 1910 or 1912? I'm just scrolling down the list. So we do get Novi in our own galaxy, and in fact, I think uh, our own SLU member, Emmanuel, discovered one just a couple of years ago. So they're, they're, they're a difference in degree. Supernovae are yep, so very let, rare. Yep, let's pop that up I on mean, the screen. Yes, and, and there here's it is. The, uh, the, yes, here's an image of his, uh, of a there, previous there discovery is he made. Yeah. yeah, less than two years ago. So um, when you're when uh, you're looking previous. for a nova in your galaxy, yeah. uh, th that happens every few years. A supernova, that's mm -hmm. another story. That's another story. Now, but, uh, it's very, now we've, very we've got a question uh, from Facebook, and I, I said at the beginning of the show that... Uh, this Nova that's been discovered by Emmanuel uh, is called, it's designated Nova M33 2015-12B. The question from uh, Facebook, Bob, is does Emmanuel get to name this Nova? Well, unfortunately not. Because, and I know we'd love to name it the Christmas star. We do. We name these things, and then the media often pick up on it, and then it gets spread out uh, around <laughs> the, uh, the entire world. And, uh, but officially speaking, uh, only discoverers of, of comets get their name attached to a celestial object. So, uh, no, unfortunately, this won't be called Nova Slu or Nova Emanuel after the observatory where it was found or the person who made the discovery. No, no such luck in his part. So he's doing it not to have his name emblazoned across the heavens, but for the sheer science of it. And uh, he gets a double salute for that. <laughs> 